16 minutes after the hour. And before I take a break, people have been asking me, am I taking off for the holidays? No. I don't have anywhere to go. I don't want to go anywhere. And my problem is everyone is off. I, Robert, you're off next week, right? And Jim's off just for Christmas. I like to work holidays. If you know, even when I go somewhere, I have a studio where I go. I don't want to be off the air. What is there out there other than, tell me what there is out there other than using your mind. What is there to do? Walk around. I don't understand that. I don't know what people do with their time off. I understand. I don't, I don't understand, actually. What do people do with time off? What is the purpose of living but to use your mind and to try to do some good and make some sense out of a crazy, insane world? Why would I not want to be here for you? I'll do it as long as God gives me the ability to do it. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. Well, okay, the story just came out. Michael Savage says draft tech workers to help defeat ISIS. Talk host urges taking Trump's idea a step further. World Net Daily just wrote the article up. It's posted only on World Net Daily. You'll probably see it nowhere but there and on michaelsavage.com. And the article begins like this. When Donald Trump was asked at the CNN Republican primary debate to clarify his call to close down parts of the Internet to thwart ISIS, the front-running candidate emphasized collaborating with the country's best tech entrepreneurs and talent. Talk radio host Michael Savage told his listeners Wednesday he agrees with Trump, but he would take it a step further, advocating a military draft focused on information technology workers. Savage said, I wouldn't get our brilliant people together and ask them to do it. I would require them to do it. Savage called for a selective, selective service that targets IT workers who can go to work for the government as hackers to take down ISIS websites, Al-Qaeda websites. And then we need programmers to program positive information for the youth of America to make them love the country again and want to help the country again, he said. And then you're going to be involved in a cyber war that you might win. During the debate Tuesday night in Las Vegas, Trump recommended bringing together, quote, brilliant people from Silicon Valley and other places and figure out a way that ISIS cannot do what they're doing. I don't want them using our, our Internet, Trump said. Savage noted that the buccaneers of the Internet fortunes, I like that word, buccaneers. I was very proud of that. The buccaneers of the Internet fortunes, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, Bill Gates of Microsoft, Larry Ellison of Oracle, they're brilliant people, very successful. They've made billions off of the Internet, which was launched by the government and development developed with federal funding, Savage pointed out. But unlike the Obama administration, he doesn't want to use that as justification to take more of their money. Instead, the tech world can contribute directly to the war on terror. Quote, Savage said this, there's a lot of things they could be doing that they're not doing in this war on terror. He said an incident last week made him wonder which side Facebook Zuckerberg is on in the war against Islamofascism. As WND reported, Facebook censored a post on Savage's page on the social media website which featured photographs of Muslim demonstrators holding signs threatening beheading and death for those who insult Islam. Facebook has not explained why it deleted the post, but it provided a link to its community standards page, which lists hate speech as one of its prohibitions, along with violence, graphic content, and nudity. Messages, held in plac messages and placards held up by the London Muslims included, quote, behead those who insult Islam, freedom go to hell, Europe takes some lessons from 9-11 and be prepared for the real Holocaust. On his show Wednesday, Savage said Facebook censored me. Why don't they censor the, the Islamofascists? He asked, which side is Zuckerberg on? Savage reiterated the government needs to have a specific draft, not a generalized draft, because we don't need everyone. I think they need to draft computer experts into the military tomorrow. Thank you, Art Moore, and thank you, World Net Daily for being the only major league conservative website in the country that actually publishes articles that have meaning. Now to the calls, 855-407-282. We're going to put that on the top of michaelsavage.com. Of course, it should be up on WND right now. Maybe some other outlets will pick it up. I think it's a very important idea that is a selective, selective service. 
WJR, John, welcome to the Savage Nation. Dr. Savage, I just want to thank you for standing guard over the Christmas vacation. When everybody else is gone, somebody's got to stand guard. And as a letter carrier, I love listening to the afternoon. Thank you, and Merry Christmas to you. Uh, well, hold on. As a letter carrier, you're going to have a present from Santa in the mail. It's my book, Government Zero. It'll be arriving in your own pouch and to, to give to yourself. Stay in the line. I may be off a day or two because I think the network closes down for Christmas Day. I'm pretty sure everyone does. Right? I mean, Robert, isn't that true? Everyone's closed on Christmas Day? No? I I don't know. I may want to work Christmas Day. What what is it? What, what am I gonna do? I don't understand it. In other words, Christmas Day is the wait waiting for Christmas Eve. I'm not a child sitting under the chimney waiting for Santa. What do you mean take the day off? What does the world come to an end? Do you think the Islamo fascists are gonna take the day off? No, I don't think they can take the day off. Um, what do you think about my idea to draft tech workers to help defeat ISIS? That's the question of the day. How did you feel about Obama's speech saying that there's no credible threat and therefore we shouldn't worry? The same garbage he fed us after Paris. Doesn't this man understand that he's a clown and that everyone is looking right through him and that he's the king without clothes? Does he not get that yet? <laughs> are in a new phase of terrorism, including lone actors and small groups of terrorists, like those in San Bernardino. Because they are smaller, often self-initiating, self-motivating, they're harder to detect. And that makes it harder to prevent. But just as the threat evolves, so do we. We're constantly adapting, constantly improving, upping our game, getting better. You're getting much better. You're getting much better at letting ISIS get through. Much better at it. There's no question he's getting better at letting them get through and not getting caught or arrested for sedition. There's no question that his game is getting better. He can have one a terror attack after another and then come out and speak as though he just succeeded in preventing a terror attack. He is getting better at his game. See, we're getting better at our game. He's upping his game of lying. He's so good at it that right after San Bernardino, he thinks he can get up and bull... Oh, I almost said it. The public. Bull gag the public. He can bull gag the public about being right on top of the game. This guy is terrific. A new terror attack, and he gives a speech like there was no terror attack. This is such classic propaganda. It's beyond belief. In other words, don't believe what actually happened. Believe the uh, con man who you elected. No, no, don't believe what actually happened. Nothing really happened in San Bernardino. In fact, if you look at it, it wasn't. It didn't even happen at all because their game is so good. It never really happened. Him and the other geniuses on the stage, they actually prevented it. You don't even know that. They actually prevented San Bernardino. It was going to be much bigger, was it not, for those men on the stage, the puffy old white men. They're the ones who prevented a much bigger act from occurring. And uh, he's getting better, and he's upping his game of lying. He's so good at it that he believes his own BS. I can't believe listening to this guy. I don't believe he didn't even fire the head of the Department of Homeland Security after the attack. They don't even respond to the American people screaming to fire him. It's unbelievable to me. All right, let's move on, because this is impossible. We know it's coming. It's going to get much worse, much, much worse you can pretty much be sure that none of us are safe today. You can pretty much be sure that no one's in charge that will stop the next terror attack. But you can pretty much be sure that Loretta Lynch will crack down on you if you say anything that offends a Muslim. That I can guarantee you. All of those puffy old white men will be dancing to her tune and making certain that anyone who th makes any Muslim uncomfortable will be arrested by the federal government for committing a crime that doesn't exist. That's what happens during a reign of terror. She is the Madame Defarge of our time. Again, using a literary reference, she is the Madame Defarge, and I guess Obama is the Robespierre. I don't know what else to call him. He's the Robespierre, and she's the Madame Defarge. Now let's go to some people on this tech idea. There's some great callers, and I want to give them the time that they deserve. Let's go to Tennessee W. OKI. Joe, you own a tech company. Go ahead. We'd love to hear from you. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I own a tech company, not one of the uh, 
Silicon Valley venture capital vampires. We provide a good product to real, real enterprise to help them grow. We put out an ad two weeks ago looking for people. Uh, we need coders. We pay relatively well, benefits. It's a proper job. It's good for the region. It's higher than the median pay in the region. And we have no, we have no takers yet. Where, where is it located? It's in Tennessee, uh, Joe? Yeah. And how much do you pay an hour? An hour? This is salary. Oh, so how much is the salary for such a pro person? 52 a year. 52 a year in Tennessee is equal to about 150 a year in Silicon Valley, isn't it? Uh, I wouldn't even say that. That's, uh, that's being a little pessimistic on that. But uh, close enough, yeah. I mean, in this region, it's an excellent salary. We put this out, and we also put it out as a freelance job. We have well over 100 replies from Indian coding companies, individuals looking to freelance our, our needs, all of that. People from Mexico, the Philippines, uh, India, Malaysia looking to code for us. We have no responses from right here. Wait, wait, you, what you're saying, you have no, no responses from American workers? Is that what you're saying? None. So where where are the where are the American workers? Where where are they? And that's an excellent question. See, the thing is that I, there, there's plenty of people that work for these tech companies, but the the people that actually make the magic happen, the coders, the programmers, they're superb people. They nose to the grindstone. They're the best workers you'll have in the, in the world. They're complete nerds. They're devoted to what they do. It's fantastic. I work with these people. They're the best. The problem is that we don't turn out enough of them because their jobs get sharked from overseas. And I feel like if we were to institute some kind of I, I, I guess a cyber defense draft, which is a good idea, which I like, because it would give them a lot of experience. When they come out of the military, I, they would be better employees for me. They'd be the best. I'd love it. Why don't we create a cyber school, federal cyber schools, five of them, six of them across America, that, uh, that would be run by people from Microsoft and Facebook and Twitter. They'd be drafted to run these schools in this time of war, and they'd set the schools up. Uh, maybe the uh, billionaires who own them would continue to pay them uh, uh, their same salary since they've gotten so much from America for so little. Maybe they continue to pay these guys great salaries. They could run these schools, and that we could attract young kids who may have the capacity for it. How long would it take a bright, young <clears throat> American high school student who's computer savvy to be useful to you, meaning to learn to be useful to you? Under a year. They don't need university education per se. No, of course not. They don't, they don't have to learn how to put a condom on a cucumber at Harvard. I get it. Exactly. I, th t to me, that would be brilliant. Honestly, why don't we do the same thing we do for some teachers? Case in point, Teach for America. Student loan forgiveness. Total student loan forgiveness in exchange for public service. So you're saying you could take a bright, computer-savvy young person in high school and send them to some crash program, and within one year they would be useful to a company like yours? Absolutely. Okay. Would that one year be about the same amount of time necessary for them to go to work for the government to start pre taking down ISIS websites? Well, they'd have to cut their teeth a little bit first. I mean, granted, ISIS websites are mostly publicly hosted. I mean, remember, ISIS is using social media that uh, the companies are based in the United States. They're using Facebook. They're using Twitter. They're using Instagram. Ah, well, why isn't Facebook and Twitter and Instagram forced by the federal government to stop permitting the terrorists from using their highways? Honestly, it, it, I would agree to that. Were I Mark Zuckerberg, I would say I, I would Well, why is Zuckerberg not being forced to do it? You know the answer better than I do. Obama comes there, he gives speeches for gazillions of dollars, and Zuckerberg gets to do nothing for America except line his pockets with more profits. And the same is for Bill Gates, despite all of his uh, PR agents and all of his, uh, you know, sweater jobs about what a nice guy he is, he is not using Microsoft to stop them. And the same goes for the Sony PlayStation, etc. These companies must be forced to protect us. Now, by the way, having said that, I am not a computer expert. What would it take for Zuckerberg to shut down an Al Qaeda uh, uh, access to one of his highways? How would he do that? Uh, well, the issue is that uh, you wouldn't. It would be a little bit difficult. Uh, first off, uh, ISIS would be able to use a VPN, a uh, virtual private network. They'd be able to route it through 
uh, website, they'd be able to route their traffic through, you know, several of them, proxies. Uh, 